Okay, Addis Maximus here. This time a little video uh, about this Ryobi. No, I didn't pay 16. I actually paid 25% off, but still 12 bucks. Figured it was worth it to do a video about this HT20 VSK. So 90 watt rated, 23,000 maximum RPM Ryobi Dremel. Assembled in the USA. So one of the classic models, as we can also tell by the color. This is actually basically early Ryobis, 80s or 90s. Uh, were like the original Ryobis, and they had they were really competing with Makita. They actually had a similar color teal, really nice cases. And then a little later on, they moved to these, and that's what would be essentially the end of the original Ryobi. And then they end up getting bought out and became, became their lime green tools that they are nowadays. But this is a, still one of the assembled in USA tools, and these are actually kind of. Uh, I'd say collectible. That's why I like doing power tools. Is just they're seen as a wear item, something that doesn't last, like hand tools or aren't actual collectibles, like movies or any number of other things. Um, but I think they are just because it's just a neat piece of history and it was actually a pretty decent one. This uses a permanent magnet motor, so it's hard to show on camera but you can feel it feels like there's little notches like little detents so that indicates that this is a uh, DC motor that's being run off of AC meaning that it has permanent magnets which also means that the 90 watt rating is a little bit deceiving because 90 watts on a universal brush type AC motor there'll be windings for the fields too and so some of the energy will be used in the fields where this, all the 90 watts is just the armature only. I did a review a while ago about the Black & Decker RTX, which is the same thing. It's not great that they use a kind of motors, but because they're seen as cheaper versus having a wound field. But they can offer good power densities, and in this case, not as much speed. A traditional Dremel in this era would be 25 to 30,000 RPM. The most modern Dremels are... 35,000 RPM, so 23,000 is actually a lot slower. But there's lots of things I like about it. You know, a normal clip, pretty well designed. It does has a threaded front piece, but it is not using what we'll call the Dremel standard, so you can't use Dremel accessories with it. Oddly enough, it didn't have a collet. And so this is actually a Dremel nut and a Dremel collet. And this collet kind of is getting stuck in there. I have to shave it down a little bit. But surprisingly enough, they generally stayed with the Dremel uh, standard, including the same Dremel thread. So this is how I'm actually able to make this thing operate. It sounds pretty decent. Although there's a little field rattling. And this is what I'll show you. I like that it has this a dedicated power switch that's separate from the speed control. So that noise is just because the field's rattling around. I'll just put a couple pieces of electrical tape or something in there to tighten that up. But I do like the speed control. Really solid detents on this adjuster. You can adjust it reasonably easy, but what's nice about uh, the thought put into this is however you're using or holding the tool, using two hands, etc., there's no way that you're going to accidentally bump or misadjust that knob and so I kind of like that to tell you the truth and as far as power I think it has you know as good as any Dremel rotary tool is going to have I like the fact that I was just able to use Dremel parts to for the collet and collet nut spin this up to high speed to see how badly it bogs down Shouldn't have done that right here. That was a lot of dust. That was actually not smoke that you were seeing towards the end of it. That was it getting, this is a carpenter's pencil, so it was digging into the lead, and that's why you're, there's some fine powder there. As you can see, and just a couple of mil, actually the sanding wheels, which is actually kind of hot. This was a coarse sanding wheel, and anybody who's familiar with Dremels, just doing a big push like that into a piece of material. 
and uh, it really didn't even bog down that much. Kind of demonstrates how it's deceiving being 90 watts because it's a 90 watt motor, but with a permanent magnet field, so it's not wasting any energy on that. The other thing I should mention about it, which is obviously difficult on camera, but it came with, zoom it out here, like an eight foot cord. I mean, it just has all of this cord. And I uh, was particularly appreciative of that, that uh, they included a extra long cord, longer than it's come on any Dremel. Anyway, we'll open this up. As we can see, we have, surprisingly enough, pretty well held together. Seven screws plus the screw cap. Decent screws. There's one extra short one right up in front, but they do have pretty wide, pretty tall. These are definitely plastic optimized screws, so nice to see that. And popping this open. On most tools, the side that the screws come out of is the side, whoop, forgot to pull off this clip here. A variety of ways this case is held together. The side that the screws come out of is the side that opens, but not all, 100% of the time, but 95% of the time. So, here's our plastic housing. We do have some writing in there. PA6 GF33, so PA is for nylon. 33% fiberglass reinforced. I mean, really is pretty decent. And even with not much reinforcing, that's a pretty rigid case. So the case is definitely pretty high quality. And there's our canned motor. But as we can see, since this is one is designed to run off of AC, they're rectifying it because it's a DC motor, but... Um, it's still like whatever rectified uh, 172 volts. You know, it's a lot for the AC peak or 120 volts uh, standard. Kind of hard to see inside this motor, but it does have a lot of fine contacts. This isn't just your standard grade motor. Don't know if it has a ball bearing in the back or not. This is our little lock here for the spindle. interesting that moves in and out we can take a further look that's the kind of the oddball spring the controller is really pretty rudimentary there's a potentiometer a few little circuits there's the transistor that does the chopping and then because it's a dc motor that's why there's this big wide bridge rectifier in there that's a, that bridge rectifier for that size is rated for way more power uh, than this, you know, the hundred, the ninety watts that this motor draws. It just must be due to the volumes of scale um, for one hundred and twenty volt rated bridge rectifiers that they have to put in a, just a much larger one. This will be like a five amp. That will be like a five hundred watt rectifier or better. So that's actually simple electronics. And actually, if this fails, it's pretty easy because this isn't all glued up. You could easily replace just order and replace the transistor or the rectifier but simple and it works try to yeah, kind of pop it all up at once and this is kind of interesting and I've seen this before in like die grinders and stuff and I'm not sure what the deal is so what this motor this motor actually has an external fan attached to it and it does move quite a bit of air and I see that the they're using the fan is pressed on the spindle of the motor and then they're using a piece of steel to drive it via slot so it's actually independent I guess that helps isolate vibration from the spindle itself to the motor which can ultimately make the brushes last longer then they're using a copper ring to reinforce this plastic. And it's just kind of interesting to see a separate spindle. And internally, metal shielded ball bearing. Still sounds pretty decent. And then in front here, we have a smaller rubber sealed ball bearing. So I'm actually pretty surprised. That's a nice little piece. It's hard to see and probably just find uh, this. I have to pry the fan off and see. 
but I really can't tell. I think it's going to be a bushing in the rear of the motor and a ball bearing in the front. On these kind of tools, oftentimes these can motors, which almost exclusively or normally almost always have um, sleeve bearings. On a lot of these tools, surprisingly enough, there'll be ball bearings in the can motor, making it much more expensive. We even have like a little noise reduction capacitor right there. I assume that's just to maybe reduce the amount of sparking that's happening on the brushes. Uh, that's about my best guess. This motor just has these, they're actually, at least they're metal, they're actually through brush guides. So they'll have reasonably tall brushes and technically you can pry that out and replace the brushes on this motor. Uh, which is something you don't often see on can motors is any reasonable way of replacing brushes and this is just bending up a metal tab. With the dual ball bearings on the spindle and a decent variable speed and the way they kind of got it set up it allowed them extra space for larger circuits. I mean, I can't really critique this for not having a field, a wound field motor because otherwise uh, it has all the right stuff. Well, got it all back together. I was noticing even the power cord is a name brand Northwire UL listed. Not a lot else to say, but to tell you the truth, I kind of like it. It's, I mean, as far as, I mean, I buy a lot of used tools, garage sales, junk stores, that type of stuff, and I will see 10 or 20 Dremels. I mean, this is over years and stuff compared to one of just anybody else, period. Um, so finding like little black and deckers and some knockoffs and like this Ryobi, I just as far as just showing up randomly, it's pretty rare because these things just sold a fraction. Everybody who wanted a small rotary tool just got Dremels. But I think this Ryobi is actually it's pretty competitive. High grade plastic uh, fiberglass nylon housing, dual ball bearing on the spindle, an actual decent. Even though it's a can permanent magnet motor, it's more than enough power and torque. And don't mind that they extended the handle just to include oversized electronics, which should be actually pretty reliable. And also just appreciate having the sep, you know, and this that's what's pretty com uncommon. Some tools do have, I guess, a separate uh, speed dials that usually you're getting in the jigsaws but on you know rotary tools it seems it's just one knob that does it all and it's just kind of nice to be able to set this at a particular speed and be able to use it turn it off and pick it up again and have it be at the exact same speed that uh, you had just set it at when like you know the dremels where you have to do that switch and you're always trying to go to the same point this is uh I would say pretty handy for carving and all sorts of things you use Dremels for. I'm actually kind of stoked about this little uh, Ryobi motor tool. It's uh, actually made pretty well. At least these old uh, assembled in USA versions were. Who knows about the modern ones? Anyway, thanks for watching.